absolutely been plagued by injuries. The latest Patriot to now suffer a season-ending injury is LeGarrette Blunt. He's out with a hip injury, that according to our Adam Schefter, that he suffered Sunday against Houston. The Patriots have 12 offensive players on IR and 16 total and have had seven different running backs this season, most in the league. Stephen A., how far can Brady take this team with all these injuries piling up? As long as Julian Edelman comes back and Rob Gronkowski gets, stays healthy, I am not concerned about the Patriots before the AFC Championship game. Now, obviously, at the AFC Championship game, if Pittsburgh is good enough to get to that point, if Peyton Manning comes back and Denver rides that number one defense and they're healthy enough to get to that point, things can get very interesting. But I don't see anything impeding New England's ability to get to the AFC Championship game as long as Rob Gronkowski and Julian Edelman are in the lineup and stay in the lineup. Of course, losing LeGarrette Blunt is a devastating blow, particularly after Deion Lewis went down as well. We understand that. But with Tom Brady behind center, able to employ play action passing, with Gronkowski and Edelman out there, I think it's easier than most systems to really generate a running game in New England. It's just that Gronkowski and Edelman have to be out there where you have some element of surprise and teams can't stack the line of scrimmage. I think as long as that's the case and Gronk and Edelman are out there with Tom Brady, I don't think you have anything to worry about. But if Gronk and Edelman, or, or, or at least one of them, are out, plus you don't have Blunt and Deion Lewis, um, you're gonna be, you're gonna, you could experience some trouble. Okay, so question. If, in fact, the New England Patriots secure home field advantage throughout the playoffs, they get two home games to get to the Super Bowl, would you bet against the New England Patriots getting to the Super Bowl? Would you I bet would not against, bet against them? them. Not, not in the AFC Championship game in Foxborough, right? No, I would not. Okay. No, I would not. Okay, this no, brings me back to my case for Tom Brady as this year's MVP. Maybe you could make the case he's always the MVP and it sh the, the wealth should be shared. Cam has had a breakout season. We all get that. A sensational season. We can talk about Carson Palmer all you want. I'm still going to talk about what this man continues to do behind a makeshift, decimated patchwork of an offensive line. They've even lost Josh Klein, their starting guard now. I, I don't know how they do it. Tom Brady's been sacked 32 times, and any other quarterback behind that line would have been sacked at least 64 times by now. Tom Brady lost Shane Vereen, who was a key to winning last year's Super Bowl against the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Then, as you well know, he lost Deion Lewis, who looked like the, the fine, the, the, the bolt from heaven to replace Shane Vereen. Gone. Now, LeGarrette Blunt, who on any given Sunday can rise up and have 150 yards rushing. He can also have a, a disappearing act game, too. But every once in a while, when you need him, when the game plan dictates for some sledgehammer, 250-pound rushing numbers, he'll give them to you. And he's gone. And, and now Edelman is iffy at best. He's, he's almost certainly not going to play for the rest of the regular season. And with that Jones fracture that Dez had, Kevin Durant had, He's just iffy for the playoffs. I don't know. And I told you the other night, watching Rob Gronkowski at Houston, he's wearing that big bulky brace, and he's one low hit away from being gone again because he's probably rushing back a little bit too quickly off his badly sprained knee. So I, I don't know how Brady keeps doing this. They're going to mix in Brandon Bolden. They're, they're talking to Steven Jackson, you remember, from the Rams, I mean, the uh, Falcons last yep. year. And... You, you know, it, it, after a while, you start saying, well, it just doesn't matter. You can plug anybody into any of these slots, and Brady makes it go. Well, given that, given the fact they're now 11-2, and two, and he leads the National Football League with 33 touchdown passes to only six interceptions, I just don't know how he can't be the MVP, but that's just me. And this continues to secure it. If he wins out this year without LeGarrette Blunt and without all the other players... Then, then how can he not be the MVP? I, I don't get it. And I, that's taken nothing well, away from what Cam's doing. 
Well, listen, and I understand, I can respect the fact that you're not taking away anything from what Cam is doing, but what I would tell you is that a vast majority of this season, uh, Brady has had his primary weapons available to him. Rob Gronkowski missed a few games, but for the most part, he's had them. Uh, Julian Edelman missed a few games, and he has missed a few games, but for the most part, you had them. Uh, the same thing could be said with Danny Amendola. The same thing could be said with Brandon LaFell. Of course, Deion Lewis going down hurts. Now, LeGarrette Blunt going down has been, you know, that hurts. But LeGarrette Blunt has been there for most of this season. We were, and not only that, there was always the expectation because of the system, because of Brady, because of Bill Belichick, because of the personnel that they had. There was always the expectation that the New England Patriots would be right where they are and playing against a suspect division in the AFC East, obviously factored into the equation as well. We're talking about a Carolina Panthers team, however, that went 7-8-1 and one in winning their division last year. We're talking about a team that came into this season with their primary receiver, Kelvin Benjamin, going down before a game is played. We're talking about a Ted Ginn Jr. being your primary receiver when he's had to be a journeyman wide receiver because even though he's electrifying with his speed and his route running, he, he tends to drop too many passes, all right? That was your primary receiver along with Greg Olson and Dixon as your two tight end and your two tight end formations, all right? So when you look at it from that perspective and the fact that D'Angelo Williams is going, so once upon a time you were running a two-back system in Carolina. Now it's just one with Jonathan Stewart. Once upon a time you had Kelvin Benjamin as your number one ride out. Now he was gone because he went out before the season even began. And you're fresh off a seven and eight and one season. And the expectation was, excuse me, the Carolina Panthers will be lucky to win seven games. But here they are standing at 13-0 with late game finishes by Cam against New Orleans, against the Seattle Seahawks, with him performing big time in the fourth quarter, being Russell Wilson type with like 14 or 15 touchdowns, just one interceptions, leading the league in QBRs in the fourth quarter. All of these things that you've seen from this man throughout the season, considering the limited weapons that he's had available at his disposal, not to mention the fact that they still stand here today unblemished at 13-0 and 0, with nearly a flaw along the way. I don't think you can deny that fact. You can respect Brady, can respect the fact that he's elite, look at his numbers and respect what they are, but you know what? You, he throws the football a little bit more consistently than Cam Newton, number one. Number two, we didn't expect anything from Carolina. And look at what Cam Newton has them doing. So you can make the argument for Brady. You're right. But I can also make the argument for Cam, which I believe I just did. Who, who has the better defense to lean on, Brady or Cam? Cam. Well, we could sit there and Cam. say Cam because, wait, 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 wait not, not, listen, I got mad respect for uh, Carolina's defense. I mean, they're big time, but let's not poo-poo New England. And what, and what they bring to the table, they got a bunch of playmakers on that side of the ball. And they know what they're doing. And so when you look at it from that perspective, a lot of times you got to remember, they've got a lead. Tom Brady's giving them some kind of cushion. They could go out there, they could take chances. When things need to get done by New England's defense, they continuously show us they're more than capable of getting the job done. Okay, which quarterback plays in the little tougher division? Brady. Because there is the Jets, and Buffalo's still pretty good. And look at the rest of Cam's division. Nah. Yeah, that's Sorry. true, but we didn't expect Atlanta to fall off the map the but way they that did. they did. You okay. know, yeah, I understand that, but they started out winning five straight games. 38 to nothing that, in Carolina. You know, exactly. Now, yeah. now, you know. So, so again, I, I mean, I, I get where you're coming, but to me, there's legitimate arguments on both sides. Okay. I'm rolling with Cam. Again, LeGarrette Blunt done for the season. He rushed for a team leading 703 yards, six TDs this season. So they now have Brandon Bold and James White, and they just signed Monte Ball from Denver to the practice squad. Moving on, it's an end of an era in Madison. Bo Ryan announces his retirement effective immediately. How surprising was this decision and the timing? The guys will react to that next.